round of applause. Let me invite Dr. Ashok Mahathir, please, sir. Technology is very disruptive. I have to give my talk from down there. Um, very good morning to all of you. Uh, and uh, it's indeed a great, great pleasure to be part of this ICT Academy. And I want to really thank the organizers for giving me this wonderful opportunity to be a part of your community. By community, I mean I belong to your tribe. I'm an academic. And I've been an academic for the last 15 years. I did my PhD as I was introduced. Uh, I did my PhD from Georgia Institute of Technology in the area of uh, science technology studies. And uh, while working for NASA, uh, we brought out a book on uh, NASA's technological collaboration with uh, different countries. So I was mainly focusing on uh, Japan and India. And uh, all of this experience came in a great opportunity to look into the academy of different countries. So uh, I decided to move back to India. And when I joined TCS, they gave me a wonderful opportunity to really lead some educational initiatives uh, with technology. So what I'm going to do right now is uh, you know, give a overview of um, what or all I'm doing in TCS. And it greatly impacts uh, the academy in Tamil Nadu. And uh, I was told that uh, since a few of the members are not going to make it, so I have to extend my talk from 20 minutes to 40 minutes. So I was sitting in my hotel room and thinking, how do I stretch my talk from 20 to 40 minutes? It's going to be really difficult, and I feel really clumsy if I have to stretch it. But uh, please bear with me. So I think the setup is ready down there. And how many of you did the QR code downloads on your smartphones? QR codes. Um, Suresh, was it communicated to all of them about the QR codes? You know what is a QR code? Huh? Some of you have it, right? So I'm going to make this presentation slightly interactive. Since we are going to talk of technology, uh, let me try this out. You know, so this is one way of making sure that you're not sleeping. Okay? Because the attention span of every listener is just seven minutes. So seven to 40 minutes is going to be <laughs> difficult. So bear with me, and I'm going to title my talk as Emerging Digital Forces and uh, Education. And these emerging digital forces are very, very disruptive. Okay? I will uh, discuss about the disruptiveness of this technology while I run the presentation. And um, so first, uh, who am I? Um, I just want, let me go down there. OK, you can try your QR code now. So this is a great way to you know, get connected with me on LinkedIn. So if you have a QR code, you can just directly go here. And then it will automatically, LinkedIn profile is showcased here. You can follow me, or you can connect with me through that. And uh, secondly, this is my Twitter feed. So I'm also an avid uh, you know, tweeter. So if you uh, aim your smartphone on this, you will be getting my Twitter profile too. So it's very easy for you to get connected with me. Hmm? Now I'm going to run a few uh, images to set the context. So since the context is on disruption, uh, these images should give you a rough idea of what uh, uh, is in store for the academy. More people in the world own a mobile phone than a toothbrush. This is truth. Okay. Secondly, uh, Facebook population is now as big as the entire world was in 1804. It has crossed a billion population. And Instagram is more valuable than the New York Times. 100 hours of video uploaded uh, to YouTube every minute. 90% of all data on the earth was generated in the last two years. This is very unsettling for me. Huh? I'll discuss more on that during my presentation. And in 2012, there were 45 million students viewing Khan Academy videos uh, 200 million times. Can anyone guess what this iconic artifact is? Yeah. Okay. Huh? 
yeah raspberry pi okay so i have brought that uh, raspberry pi too just to show you what the uh, internet of things is doing for the education you can take a look at it uh, after my talk so this is you can get it out of flipkart or uh, at select uh, websites in india so initially it was around 35 dollars now the prices are coming down so this is a mini computer through this you know it doesn't need a drive or anything you just need to have a little bit of uh, linux knowledge to just hook your hook this one and you can make a plenitude of uh, contraptions for your home now how do i make my rice cooker to talk to me through the mobile phone you can use this and do that how do you make your microwave to talk to you you can use it through this okay uh you can do this again uh, the the forces that i'm going to talk about are four or five okay the first one is this any guess what this is can if you shoot your uh, uh, phone on this you will be getting it anyone hmm social media next hmm mobility is ha huh? uh, the big data analytics and this is cloud and this is what is it the last one iot internet of things hmm? okay someone asked me uh, what do you do as a game consultant you know this is a very uh, you know this has become a cliche now i am a gamification expert you know that's what many of the foreigners have been telling around and uh, you know a lot of people are getting trained in this area Uh, but two years back it was still a niche area you know even now there are many many corporations who are adopting gamification you know i kind of moved on from there because uh, incentivizing uh, a process and incentivizing a micro behavior has been there in history for several hundred years so this is a new avatar of incentivization i'll tell you what this gamification is through a very good video and this video will help you to understand the entire process of gamification micro behavior we wanted to drive uh, among these people i call it a micro behavior because uh, generally we don't tend to do uh, uh, that when we are uh, having a stairs and an escalator so the micro behavior is how do you enable them to take the stairs rather than the escalator so the folks wagon came up with this brilliant concept of why can't we make you know stairs so that the people will begin to use it so in a nutshell this is what gamification is of uh, applying the game dynamics and the game principles to mundane uh, serious endeavors so uh, broadly we appropriated some of these uh, game mechanics for mundane process like uh, how do you make sure that the students come to class on time right you can drive the behavior over a period of time and then it becomes an internal part of the student so till that time you know you use these techniques 
you know for serious and non serious contexts. So this is what gamification is and uh, using these principles we have built a portal and I also want to declare uh, you know that portal to you all you can use it for free and uh, we have done a few pilots uh, in select institutions and uh, this portal is all about how do we improve English communication uh, among the students and also teachers if the teachers are interested. So by appropriating game lingo or the game dynamics we are making sure that the students inherently gets motivated to come to the portal to get some badges to get some points you know basically the karma points and then uh, getting some uh, you know recognitions and unlocking privileges over a period of time. So by doing that what happens is everybody becomes transparent you know in social media you cannot hide right if the entire education curriculum is all brought into the social media framework in an instant bingo you get the transparency so and so Muthu Kumar from Shastra University has got 25 marks in English in the last so anybody across the world will know what scores Muthu Kumar has got so that is the power of the social media and uh, all of these are floating around as he was pointing out the virality of it right so how do we internalize these portals and make it use for our, make it useful for our own context sitting in remote Tirchangod you know a person can really interact with the you know associates of TCS through this portal so I will declare that open to you you know I will do a demo of what the portal is about it is called as the language lounge ok and uh, you know all of his students can be part of it currently there are 30,000 people and we are hoping that it will become you know uh, if, you know at least a million people will get on uh, get on boarded on the portal. So moving on uh, I just want to retouch uh, on the digital forces that I talked about earlier ok uh, the topic emerging digital factors and forces and education um, so I have uh, listed uh, four iconic uh, uh, trends or technologies that is impacting education and before going there uh, I just want to introduce this guy to you uh, any idea who this person is yeah, just click on that yeah mobile phone you can just uh, track the name of this person who kind of popularized the word disruption ok. Uh, his name is Clayton Christensen he is uh, a professor at Harvard University and he is also on the board of uh, TCS. So he wrote a fascinating thesis in the, in the, you know, in the late 70s uh, called the innovators dilemma like what causes disruption and how do we go about managing these disruptions in our industries. So uh, all the forces that I talked about you know all these are disruptive forces like cloud computing and uh, social media and mobility. And the big data analytics and the internet of things and uh, so I am going to show you briefly what these uh, you know uh, what these forces are doing for the education. So it is again an audio visual so that uh, I can keep you awake and also it will be a little bit more interactive that way.
Okay, on the effect of cloud computing, uh, this gives a quick overview of uh, the possibilities in a cloud environment. Providing students with the best possible services and facilities is the main objective of any university. Part of this, now more than ever, is ensuring that students and staff are supported by modern, robust IT services that empower both the university's vision and values. Increasingly, students are changing the way that they communicate, collaborate and access resources. They're expecting around-the-clock online access to services from different locations and using different devices. This places an increasing pressure on IT infrastructure to be able to keep pace with their demands. The cloud is an increasingly popular way of helping deliver IT services and brings with it a number of advantages. It allows greater flexibility and agility with which services can be delivered and easily scales for changes in demand. A usage-based charging model provides greater budget predictability and a more efficient use of an organization's IT spend. The cloud also helps improve the availability of services, reinforcing this with service level agreements and around-the-clock support. This takes away the headache of managing on-site infrastructure and helps staff enable to focus on frontline services. The cloud also takes away the reliance on individual sites, improving the university's ability to continue to deliver service in the event of a site outage or major incident. One service that is increasingly being delivered from the cloud is communications. With many universities having large and complex telephone estates, traditional on-site systems can often become inflexible, difficult to manage and expensive to maintain and replace. Many also lack modern facilities such as unified communications, which are increasingly being used by universities to enable instant collaboration between staff, students and academics across the globe. Cloud telephony delivers the service from inside the network, removing the need for on-site telephone systems. It also allows the delivery of a wide range of communication features and tools and with functionality available on an individual basis, you only pay for what you need. There are a number of financial benefits of taking communications from the cloud. With no on-site hardware to buy and the option to rent handsets, upfront costs are typically over 90% lower than with a site-based phone system. Operational costs are also reduced with all maintenance and management included as part of a per user per month fee. This also removes unpredictable charges commonly incurred with traditional phone systems such as upgrades or repairs. In addition, power used to run an on-site phone system is also reduced, saving you money and reducing your carbon emissions. So why consider in technology? In technology has invested over 100 million pounds in developing and engineering its cloud to deliver reliable and robust services that offer value and support innovation. Using infrastructure hosted across multiple accredited UK data centers and meshed together via a resilient fiber optic network, our cloud telephony service is delivered with a 49's availability SLA and comes with 24 7 support as standard. In technology, have experience in migrating tens of thousands of users from traditional phone systems to cloud telephony. We pioneered voice over IP across the Janet network, removing the need for separate connections or phone lines. We deliver telephony services to a number of academic institutions, including the London School of Economics and Oxford University. So in summary, the cloud can help deliver more reliable and hassle-free telephony. It can deliver advanced communication and collaboration tools to users in any location using any device. It can remove worries about the availability and maintenance of on-site platforms and what to do if they go wrong or become inaccessible. Cloud telephony can also save you money with a significantly reduced capital outlay and a predictable ongoing charge. It can also help reduce your impact on the environment. This is a lot to suggest from a different way of delivering IT services, but the cloud is already being used to good effect in numerous top universities in Britain. To understand more about how our cloud telephony service could help your university and students, then please let us give you or a nominated colleague a call. Simply fill in the form by following this link and we'll call at a time convenient to you.
For more information about any of our services or to view further videos and case studies illustrating how we've helped other educational institutions, please visit www.intechnology.com forward slash cloud services education. So the convergence of all the digital forces that I talked about, you know, uh, the social media, big data analytics, cloud, and the IoT, uh, it converges in a platform like this. So this is what we have been piloting with all the college students. And um, I'll tell you what this portal does for improving English language proficiency. Uh, the ethos of this uh, portal, we have three spheres of engagement. One is the connect, next is the collaborate, and lastly is the play. Since it's a gamified platform, uh, we wanted to make learning more as a play rather than a, you know, a customized learning. So in the connect area, uh, any student across India will be able to connect with another person you know, if they become part of the portal. And uh, the connect also gives them the ability to uh, really relate with the faculty and the mentors uh, for improving their language proficiency. So the collaborate is more like the uh, is more like the Facebook, um, where they can go and post some comments, uh, ask a question, and uh, run polls and debates. And lastly, is the play area where we have uh, all of the lessons packed in in a more entertaining way. I'll just run a few things with you, but before that, I want to talk to you a little bit about the widget that you see here. So the widget here has. Uh, all the game, important game elements, which is the points, badges, and leaderboard. Suppose if somebody from uh, your university is part of this, we will be able to uh, see this person's profile. At the same time, we will be able to gauge his points and uh, where does he stand on the leaderboard too. Um, a unique feature of uh, this uh, widget is this. Um, you know, the subtle artificial intelligence here, which captures... Uh, the you know initially when a student comes in it will be asking him his 10th marks his 12th marks and also his college uh, English marks so based on that the system uh, generates a pathway for him to engage the portal so it's a kind of a very adaptive learning so if somebody has really uh, you know mastered the English language then the system would create a pathway for him wherein he can uh, leverage the platform to increase his proficiency more and more. So this is where the uh, you know subtle artificial intelligence also comes in. So I'll show you one area which is called as the play, uh, wherein uh, he is able to watch some videos and then take a quiz simultaneously. Uh, so when he does that, uh, what happens is he is you know we can check his English comprehension you know and his listening comprehension and uh, at any point we will be able to do some granular measurement too on uh, how he is doing in the portal uh, over a period of time. So here we have a video of uh, you know Steve Jobs speaking about uh, you know the farewell address. And on the right side, you can take notes, or you can even ask a, uh, you know, you can ask a question. So the, it is built on a Web 2.0 framework, so that there is a constant engagement with the rest of the community and with the rest of the students. So through this, uh, we are able to get his footprint over, you know, for a longer period of time. Like uh, if he joins the portal in the first year, and when TCS is going for recruitment. You know, the head hunting has turned itself. We are not going to universities uh, to beat the drum and get the guys to be part of us. So this is going to really revolutionize the way we are going to do the interview process. So this is in pilot stage, and soon we will be releasing it to all of the colleges across India. So this is just with the language alone. So this has the convergence of all the digital forces that I tried to uh, you know, address. So this is, there is cloud element in it, this has big data analytics in it. You know, the analytics is so precise that I will be able to tell uh, on um, August 1st, uh, so and so watch that YouTube video at this time on a Samsung mobile three times. So that is more than enough for me to 
get some uh, image of who the person whom we are trying to hire. So it really arms the guy who is going for recruitment. So we will do this analytics over a period of four years and uh, we will be able to spot some bright talents whom we can straight away issue an offer letter in the, during his third year or in the fourth year. So this is the power of the social media analytics cloud and the artificial intelligence that I have been talking about. So this is a raw portal and this, is, this can be used for a multitude of functions. So this is just with the language and we have other technology portals too wherein uh, somebody can even submit a code and the machine analyzes the code and we will be able to get the profile of the person, uh, no the tech uh, profile of the person even before the recruitment starts. So this is going to be the game changer in the way we are going to spot the talents uh, you know, in colleges. And not only this, we have another portal called this the show me portal. If students are saying that they do have potential and they do have a lot of uh, creative spirit, we are asking them to showcase their product online. So through that, uh, through whatever they have submitted, we are able to engage with the audience and we are able to make a good ballpark of the numbers uh, of people who, whom we will be recruiting uh, for this season or the next season. So in a, you know, in, a, in a short moment, we are able to converge all of that and bring a paradigm shift in the way we are looking at uh, recruitment. So uh, with that, uh, you know, uh, short introduction and, uh, you know, an address of all these digital forces, I conclude my presentation. But please do stay in touch with me and uh, soon we'll be coming to campuses to, uh, you know, really unleash this uh, portal, whatever we have built uh, with the expertise of the TCS, uh, you know, scientists. Thank you. <laughs>